For those of you who might be new to our events, uh, we are hosted on Cloud Customer Connect, which is our Oracle community forum for end users. You'll see some links in the chat throughout the presentation today that lead you back to those CCC forums. And if you're not already a member, we invite you to create a free account, join in discussions, and look for upcoming events on all kinds of topics. My name is Kenna Ketrick. I'm a program manager with the OCI go-to-market team. And today I'm joined by Ophelia Hernandez, director of DevOps here at OCI, uh, as well as Sarab Shah and Jonathan Schreiber, both product managers for DevOps as well, for a technical deep dive into the newly fully complete CI CD platform. Hello, well, before I start, can you see my screen? Is it the correct screen? Yes, looks great. Okay, just making sure. Well, my name is Ophelia Hernandez. I'm a director of engineering. I work on the OCI DevOps service. And today we're going to be walking you through what is the OCI DevOps service, what is DevOps for a little bit, and do a full end-to-end -end demo. Although I checked a few minutes ago and a piece of my demo may not be working, so we'll see how well that deployment goes. But um, so if you have any questions at any time, please put them in the Q&A. We will probably answer them at the end when the rest of the team joins. This is Safe Harbor. You don't need to read that. Let's start. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have seen this. So looking at, does your organization currently use any DevOps tools? I see about 74% of you said yes. So I'm assuming you, besides the 3%, you know what DevOps is. This is just an infinity symbol to symbolize that DevOps is not just one tool, not just one practice. It's a continuous improvement on how we deliver software, how we monitor software, how we operate, and OCI wants to be able to help teams improve on that process. We want to make it easier to get your code from a local developer's box all the way out into production without having to worry, like, was this code correct? Were there any bugs? Did I release a security vulnerability? So we want to be involved in helping our customers do that. And whatever tools you're currently using, you are also working in the same process. Well, if you want to know what is OCI DevOps Service, this is exactly what we have worked on over the past one and a half, two years. It's a complete CI CD platform. I'm sure you've heard of other CI CD platforms. Ours has a code repository, ability for developers to commit their code into a code repo, which is, which is a Git repo. Um, you can compile your code, build pipelines, run a build, store an artifact, deliver an artifact. We currently have multiple artifact repositories, container registry. So if you want to store container images, that's what we have. If you want to store general artifacts, maybe you have jars, um, manifest YAMLs, other types of files, we store them in our generic artifact registry. Um, once those are stored here, you can use them with our deployment pipeline. So for example, this is not required, but we have a sample pipeline set up here. Deploy it to your dev environment, run some integration tests. Maybe you need to get an approval because only certain people in your team can approve releases and then deploy to production. Um, if you deployment means taking these artifacts and pushing them out to whatever environments you are supporting. For us, we currently support compute, which is VM and bare metal. Um, container engine for Kubernetes, which is, if you know the shorthand, it's OKE and functions, which is all of these three are within OCI. And like I said, if you miss anything, we have done this a million times and I can answer all your questions um, whenever you need. So OCI DevOps service, why should you use it? Well, one, it's all cloud native, it's automation. Um, we want to simplify and speed up your software development process so you can be, have reliable delivery of features and the velocity of your team will be reliable. It's fully managed, nothing for you to manage. You can take advantage of the OCI security. Um, for example, if you need container image scanning, signing, we have that already built into OCI. You can add that into your pipelines to limit who can do deployments, who can do builds, who has access to repos. We support IAM policies. If you're an existing OCI customer, you've used IAM pol policies already um, and governance. So, you want to be able to see what happened from commit all the way to what happens the operations after you deploy. We have full end-to-end -end views. You see the commit, it's stored in the exact same logs as the build and the deployment. And then OCI, it is built into OCI logging, which is a native service. 
So easy to search for you to find and debug issues. I do see some questions popping up. I will either get to them right before the demo or at the end. So why OCI DevOps? Similar to the reasons I just said, security, flexibility, a cloud native. So there's nothing for you to manage, no infrastructure, no security patching. Um, you get to use a full CI CD workflow without having to worry about that. You can deploy to compute OKE. We even support third party integrations. We do have a Jenkins uh, plugin. We have a Spinnaker plugin you can use. Also, we want to meet developers where they are. So if you don't want to use code repos, for example, you can use your existing Git and push it into OCI for builds and deployments and, or just use the deployment part. So developer friendly pricing. We don't charge based on users. We charge based on the resources you use. For example, the number of builds may use a lot of compute or code repo storage. That's how you would get your costs. It's nothing to do with um, if you have one user versus a thousand users. It's all based on your development process. If you hear me mute for a little, it may be because I need to cough and don't want to uh, cough in everyone's ear. So continuous integration is the latest piece we released. We had two releases last year, June and October. Continuous integration is the ability to commit your code, build it all day long, find bugs, fix it over and over again. It's very scalable. So you can do concurrent builds. You can work with GitHub or GitLab, as I said, or you can use the built-in code repos. If you want everything in OCI, you can do that. Um, you can connect your repos to your build pipelines, to your deployment pipelines. So one commit from a repo, which I will demo, demo later, can trigger the entire process all the way into production. And the artifacts can be delivered to our internal OCI artifact repositories. So if your team builds a package that everyone at your company uses, it'll be available for them to use as well. If you need to store secrets, we are currently using the OCI vault for storing secrets. So we don't want anything that could be uh, stolen it's directly in code. We want you to use the security that's built into OCI to keep your pipeline secure, to keep your code repo secure. Continuous development. Um, we are currently support multiple releases. We have rolling instance groups. We have release to OKE, release to functions. And com coming up in the next month, we have blue-green deployments and Canary. So if you want the ability to deploy blue-green, deploy to half, and then test it out, switch traffic to the correct environment that's coming up, perform global deployments. We are available in all regions that OCI is available in. So there's no place where you can't use OCI DevOps. Um, I mentioned this earlier, integrated connect your existing workflows. If you really like Jenkins and you don't want to change that process, you don't have to. Um, rollback will be one of the most important things. We support automatic and manual rollbacks. So if you set up your pipeline so that anytime there's a failure, you want to immediately roll back to the previous healthy version, you can just check off a box and that will happen. If you don't like that process because you want to have more control, we also have a manual rollback process. So this is my uh, Node.js application. It is currently just an API. It is connected to an autonomous database. Um, we, we call it OCI DevOps Node Express. If I go into the console, you can also see it here, my latest code repos. You're looking at my screen. I'm going to make a change. Let's find, this is my Swagger documentation. I'm going to update to version four here. Here, a minor change. I'm going to save it. Save. <clears throat> I'm going to go into here. I want to make a comment. Testing for my demo. This works just like any other Git client would. All of your developers should be comfortable using this. Um, check it in. Push. I'm sure you can all do it faster on the command line. I like the simplicity of using VS Code. OK, I've made a change here in my local. Let's see how long it takes to get up to this repo. Sorry if my video is off, but 
Uh, is this my? Here we go. As you can see, um, I have changed version 1.2.3 to 1.2.4 right here. This is the OCI code repos. We support viewing diffs. Let me move this out of the way. You can do them side by side. You can do them in line like this. Um, you can hide white space and you can actually view the file all right here. So I kind of skipped a few sections. So I'm gonna start with like, how do I even get here? I just wanted to make sure I showed you my change in VS code so that the rest of the demo can go smoothly. So let's start from the beginning. You log into OCI, you're gonna come into this page. If you click the hamburger menu on the left, go to developer services, you should see DevOps. I have projects pinned, but as a new person, you should go directly to DevOps. This is our overview. All of these links will help you to learn what are the different pieces of DevOps. We talked a little bit about them in my demo, but this gives you a better picture. The different pipelines we support, build and deployment, the types of environments, environments meaning the target platforms where you want your code to go, um, the types of artifacts we support. So after you've built your code and it's come out with a package, a container, a YAML, where, where can you put that? How do you view that? Code repos, this is, this is a link mostly for the internal code repos, but we also have some information on how to mirror a repo from GitHub or GitLab. External connections. So if you want to connect OCI to your GitHub or GitLab, you can click here to learn more about external connections. And triggers is finally the way you connect a code repo to a build pipeline. What actions do you want to take? Maybe you only want to commit or trigger a build when someone merges their code. You don't want to do it for every push. Maybe there's a specific action. So that's what triggers will cover. And if you were brand new and wanted to create a project, you click create right here. Um, so I already have a demo, but I will still walk you through it. This is the OCI, no spaces. Demoing for developers. Um, right here, select a topic. So everything that happens in your pro your DevOps project, you can receive email notifications. I already have a topic set up. If you don't, you will need to go to notifications and OCI and set this up. You can do it by topic name. You could choose a different compartment. So I've selected that. I will create my DevOps project. Immediately, it will take me in. The first thing you'll see when you come into an empty project is this yellow warning. Logging is required to run build and deployment pipelines. The reason we warn you is because if there is any charges for logging, we want you to know that if you do not enable this, you won't be able to run the build and deployment pipelines. Um, I already have a project. I'm not gonna go about enabling it. This is my project. We've been using it for a while. And I just told you how I committed some code, remember? This is my build pipeline. Let's walk into it. Oh, it was already successful. Let's see. Yep, succeeded. It's pretty fast. So when you open it up, you'll see three panels. On the left is the actual pipeline you created, a visual viewer. On the middle is the different steps that took place inside your build. So I was creating an artifact, get my build runner, the build runner is hosted in OCI. Those are our own build runners. We pull from a warm pool to run the code, run the commands inside your build spec. It set up a software build environment, downloaded my source, which was from my repo. It then downloaded any additional artifacts I needed. If I needed to export any variables, it was doing that as well. Um, it did an NPM install because this was an ODE. I had a couple tests that I wanted to run just to make sure bad builds don't get through. And then at the end, it uploaded my Kubernetes YAML and I built a container image. And then I also triggered a deployment pipeline. And that was also successful. So I'm going to quickly check uh, if my this is a live URL where my OK cluster is hosting this application. As you can see, we have version 1.2.4 showing here. Um, so my my end-to-end -end demo was uh, successful. I want to show you a little bit about what happened. How did the build know what to do? So let's go back to VS Code. 
uh, we'll open build. We have a file called build spec YAML. This is custom to OCI. We have documentation on how to build it. You'll see you can set your timeout. Um, if you need to use any secrets, which I mentioned, these are vault variables. I, I am using a secret here. Um, you could put them in if you want to export any variables. So I'm using build run hash to export kind of like making my artifacts unique. So each artifact will be stamped with this instead of a version. And then I'll, I will know that this is the latest unique artifact. Um, keep going. This just tells me where I want to install my application. Where I'm getting NPM. What do I want to do on failures? And do I want to set the timeout? You can increase it or decrease it. Run tests. So I have written some unit tests. This will just run the ones that are in there already. Upload my YAML file and where it's going to upload. So this is into the OCI generic artifact repository. This tells me exactly. If there's a failure, I will get a message. Since I am using Kubernetes, I also want a container image. So that's being built right here, a Docker file. Um, you don't have to, you can do instance groups. You don't need to do uh, Kubernetes, you can do functions. And then this is just the credentials for logging in. And I finally, at the end, I push the image to the registry. Um, I'll see if anybody specifically has questions on the build spec. My questions are peering over here. I see is OCI DevOps plan for implementation in the OCI US DOD Gov Cloud regions. Yes, we are currently released in the Gov Cloud regions and going through the process to be able to GA. So, like I said, we plan to be everywhere, everywhere OCI supports. Close this and back to my application. So, if you wanted to know how, let's go look at the deployment pipelines. I have a very simple pipeline because I wanted it to be simple for this demo. So deploy to prod, <laughs> only one step. It has the name of my uh, Kubernetes cluster, it has the name of the artifact that I used. I do not have automatic rollback in AD. Say this was not enough for me. Like I don't want to just deploy to prod. I can add a stage, pause the deployment for approvals. Approve production deployments. You can put the number of approvers right here. I only want one because there's only me in this demo. It takes a while, but you'll see that I have approved production deployments deployed to prod. I can run this directly from here, but I'm going to trigger it again the same way I did last time. Uh, I'm actually. Let's see, there's a few places where this version appears. So trying to figure out which one was the right one. Because this part says 1.2.2. I'll make any change. <laughs> Save it again. Go back to my changes, add it. Redeploying to prod with approval. Check. Make sure it pushed. Go back. Um, if I go back, I should see a build being triggered on this project page, um, which we first came into. This is your dashboard, your view into everything that's happening in your DevOps project, your latest code repos, your latest build pipelines, and your latest build history. It is not automatically refreshing, so we'll see if another build starts kicking off. Okay, this is the build I just triggered. It's accepted. You can also see my latest deployments. So before this demo, you can see I had two failed and currently have one in progress. Open link in tab. Which watch the one that's in progress. This is this was the previous one that I had running. It's currently in progress. I've been, I set off like five of these <laughs> before the demo started. So no matter who in my team is working on this project, I can see all of the deployments happening. And deployments to an environment will not happen in parallel. They will go one after the other another so that you don't mess up production. You want to make sure deployments to production happen in a specific order. 
might still, if this one does not finish successfully, then um, this build also won't finish successfully. But here we go. We see the exact same steps happening and eventually trigger deployment will happen. I would walk through how you would build your build pipeline now. While that's happening, I don't want to just sit here. So let's talk about environments. Right now, all my demo was for OKE, but you don't have to just use OKE, Oracle's Kubernetes engine. We also support functions and instance groups. If an instance group is a group of compute instances that you want to deliver your application to. So IG production. Description is optional. We also support tagging. So if your company use tagging for security, every single um, environment, stage, pipeline, it has the ability to add tagging. If I, let's see. Yeah, I have none available in here. Let's see if I have any available in Phoenix, which is the my main. So I have a demo cluster. Let's make sure I'm going to select instance group. I wonder was showing me that. I was wondering why it was not showing me instances. So you can select instances from anywhere. Um, Ashburn, if I have any. Frankfurt. I'm going to just select these. Add them. Create. This is now my instance group environment. This is an example. If I wanted to deploy to that, I could de create a deployment pipeline that would deploy to it in a rolling environment, which I'm not going to go through immediately since it looks like my previous deployment is stuck, but this is how you would create your pipeline. Um, we do have a full walkthrough. It's about an eight hour video. If you want to see exactly like, how do I get my artifacts in? How do I set up my secrets? How do I create these environments? The full walkthrough takes a while, but I think it's worth it if your team is seriously considering trying to onboard to OCI DevOps. So this will be my instance group pipeline. Create pipeline. You do not have to just use the console. If your team likes to do everything through Terraform or through APIs, all of this is available. We have an SDK. We support connection through APIs as well. I would add the stage. At this point, you can see all the stages I have. Again, instance group is what you would select. Uh, instance group pipeline demo. Select an environment. You can only select environments that are in your project. So if you, if you come to this and it's empty, you will need to go back out and add an environment. The reason we do that is to make sure that if you're limiting security to the project, people will only have access to what you want them to have access to and not select the wrong fleet. So I already have an Ashburn VM fleet. Select that. For deployment configuration, your artifacts should be a YAML file. As you can see, mine's blank. I would actually have to go add one. If besides the YAML you wanted a deployment, you wanted to add some additional artifacts, that's what we have here. You will also need to select a load balancer. So I have a few available. One of these is being used for my Kubernetes cluster. So I don't know if I want to mess with it, but select and a listener. Just, I want to make sure this is port 80, select. Um, I won't be able to save this without my artifact. If I go to another screen, I might be able to add it, but I won't do that right now. If you click add, it would show up just as this one did. So instance group, I think this is my test pipeline, similar to this. If I wanted to do this in parallel, I could also do that. I'm going to do a test wait stage, waiting. This stage is really, say you wanted to have an hour delay between dev and production, you can put that in here. Or you just wanted to play around with DevOps and the easiest stage to create is wait. That's what I use it for. Uh, I have a trailing space, no spaces. I have, these two are considered in sequence, but if I wanted to add something 
at the, to deploy at the same time, you can add as many as you want in parallel. So waiting in parallel. Yeah, previous. I, I always forget that's not the stage name. Waiting in parallel. Add. You can make this graph as complicated as you want. So if you have 100 regions and you want to deploy all in parallel, you just keep adding parallel deployment stages, parallel testing stages, get a very complicated pipeline here. Go back to my demo. Let's see if my build actually finished. The second build that I triggered looks like it did. My deployment did not. It just died. So I won't be able to show that completely. But let's see. Well, this one is paused because I have not approved it. So that was actually the correct, what I wanted to happen. I triggered a, uh, committed my code, I triggered a build, and then I did not want code to go to approved it. I'm sure somewhere in my Outlook, I received the email notification that this was pending. So if I go here, I can click approve, demo approved, click approve. It's going to think about it. It says successfully approved here, but it's processing now. Let's wait a second, see if it actually gets past the approvals. So it was approved and now it's deploying to production. I'm off on it then because I started to sound like a robot, but I see you here now. Hi, Ophelia. <laughs> I also see Sarab. Mm -hmm. This is Jonathan Schreiber. He's our senior principal product manager and Sarab Shaw is our principal product manager both in our team for DevOps and they, together, they've the ones that were the minds behind all of this. It was a so big I, team effort. I think I've gone through almost everything and I, we have a ton of questions in the Q&A. I don't know if we want to start going through them or if you want to continue with the rest of the slides because I only went up to demo. Why don't we go through the integrations and I can grab some questions here too out of the chat. Um, these are great questions, so these are, these are fun to get. Maybe I'll highlight some when we get to the question section too. So starting from here or here, here we go. Tell me which screen you see. I'm seeing your presenter notes, which are probably fine, but like, there. There, that's the fall. Perfect. Do you want to go through these? Yeah, yeah, that? absolutely. Yeah, thanks, Sophia. And so I know that we've got a lot of questions here um, about the demo and about kind of uh, the mechanics of the deployment. And I think we'll, we'll get to those, everyone, in the question section coming up later. Um, but first, just a little bit about sort of like, who did we build this DevOps uh, service for? So next next slide. Um, you know, you probably heard us say that we we really want to make just deploying the OCI um, platforms easier, regardless of whether you're building a new application. So if you're doing net new cloud native deployment or development, or you're migrating an existing application that you already started working on, either on-prem or on another cloud. So for migrating use cases, um, customers and developers will typically already have um, a, a CI solution that they were using. Um, you know, with their existing application, and the most one of the most popular systems out there uh, is Jenkins. So you probably have heard of Jenkins. Uh, it gives you the ability to run a pipeline, to run your build instructions, but you need to run your Jenkins server and your Jenkins runners. Um, so in those cases, the customers that we work with continue to run Jenkins, but they are able to take advantage of DevOps to make their deployments to OCI platforms easier. Um, and the advantage there is like Ophelia showed you, the authentication and the um, steps of your deployment are all taken care of by the DevOps platform. You don't have to set up um, sort of credentials and tokens back in Jenkins in order to deploy to VMs or to OKE or to functions. So next slide. We, uh, we created a Jenkins plugin. It's there in uh, the Jenkins plugin uh, directory. Uh, for OCI DevOps. And so you can install that and then it will make it easier to deliver artifacts uh, to OCI artifact repositories and to trigger and kick off your deployment pipeline. The other way that we work with existing basically parts of your CIC, CI CD toolchain is through um, uh, GitHub and GitLab uh, source control integration. So you can mirror a repository to an OCI DevOps um, system. Oh, cool. The poll. Uh, I, I don't know yeah. why that popped up right now. 
No, that's fine. I'll just pause. Let's take, let's take the ball. So maybe we we'll wonder, like, as we're talking about these, these kind of um, integrations, we wonder what tools are you using right now with your own uh, uh, DevOps work, workflows. And we'll give it another 15 seconds. Um, I'm seeing GitHub definitely index pretty high. Okay, here. I one see Jen I'm... Jenkins also. And Jenkins, yeah. Oh, cool. A couple of people using Jenkins X. So that's really interesting uh, as well. And, and GitOps is really popular. Okay, let me add this. So here in our informal poll, it looks like kind of of all the, the, um, the SCM systems out there that GitHub looks like the most popular with this audience, followed by um, GitLab. Um, and, and then other, of course, is a big category. So maybe that's your own tools that you've made or the Atlassian Suite and Bitbucket. Um, but particularly interesting to see some of these newer um, kind of technologies here uh, in the responses, whether it's Jenkins X uh, running kind of um, on top of Kubernetes or uh, uh, Argo. So we'll talk a little bit about those and GitOps later. Um, so yeah, so if you are using GitHub, you're using either github.com or self-hosted GitHub Enterprise, you're able to mirror a repository. And so therefore you can continue working with your team, collaborating, doing pull requests, and then mirror the code over into OCI DevOps so that your builds run more quickly. Or you can just kick off a build. Um, so in a build stage, and we can show you later if, if we have that time, um, you're able to select a repo directly from GitHub or GitLab. Bitbucket support is coming really soon. Um, and then multi-cloud. So we have a number of customers too who are saying, hey, you know, we have a multi-cloud strategy. What can we use if we want one pipeline to orchestrate deployment across our clouds? And here, um, from what we've seen, Netflix has really developed one of the best systems for this um, that they open sourced a couple of years ago and has con contributions from a number of, uh, of enterprises. Um, and that system is Spinnaker. So you can install Spinnaker on VMs or on Kubernetes. And uh, our team has written a cloud driver, so a plugin for Oracle Cloud uh, that will allow you with Spinnaker to create a stage to deploy to VMs or Kubernetes. So in that use case, you can do multi-cloud orchestration. Um, okay. So, so let's get started. We're excited. Um, we have a number of great customers already since we launched a full CI/CD suite um, at the end of, uh, or end of October, beginning of November of last year. Um, and we're excited to hear about how you'll use DevOps as well um, with your workflows and to build and deliver software uh, to OCI. Uh, next slide. So questions, so here we go. So this is where it gets really fun and I'm sure we have a number of questions. Um, we, we have some questions in the Q&A. Someone asked, what is container registry? Oh, that's a good one. So the container registry is uh, the OCI native service uh, that is your, your basically your host for your container images. So it's like Docker Hub or k.io, where you can push from uh, the command line your container image that you built with a container runtime. Um, and you push that and then you're able to manage that with versions and you use that to then deploy uh, from the container registry to OKE or functions or another container platform. And then um, someone asked, what is the exact difference between OCI DevOps and OCI Visual Builder Studio CI CD via GitHub? EB Studio is used together or in combination with Oracle SAS? That's a, that is a great question. So we had a slide earlier um, basically talking about them, but we weren't sure about this audience if we should get into the differentiation between them. So if you if you sort of remember from Ophelia's demo, the target platforms for this OCI DevOps service are really OCI platforms themselves. So you look at Kubernetes uh, collections, groups of VMs that's, that are instance groups or functions um, with more OCI platforms coming in the future as we develop and create other platforms for developers. Um, when we talk to the Visual Builder team, um, obviously there are these two systems. Visual Builder's target uh, platforms are really the SaaS applications. So Oracle SaaS applications like 
um, ERP um, extensions to Apex applications um, and Fusion. Um, fusion applications as well. So that is their focus and their target. And so we really can use them side by side, again, depending on the customer's workloads and what they're building. So if you're building services that are going to be deployed um, to OCI platforms, really OCI DevOps is, um, we believe, the most, the most efficient and easiest to use way to do that for developers. But if you have an extension that you want to make um, onto again, Oracle SaaS, then you would be doing that in Visual Builder. Um, Someone is, is oh. asking, we need a session for using OCI DevOps service to create DevSecOps CI CD pipeline. So maybe you can just talk about our plans for DevSecOps? Or yeah, so, so right now, um, what we're able to bring for DevSecOps are the available security services from OCI. So if you look across, again, we talked a little bit about the container registry, the container registry has a feature to scan container images for vulnerabilities, as well as to sign a container image so that only a signed container <laughs> can be deployed to OK. So those are the DevSecOps, I would say, security around stages of a pipeline. If we think about DevSecOps, there's been so much work in the community around um, frameworks to secure the software supply chain over the last year and a half. Um, obviously, there's been a lot of news around prominent supply chain attacks, uh, whether it's solar winds across the government and Microsoft and a whole swath of uh, industries or others. Um, we are looking at making it easier for customers to secure their pipelines um, with OCI DevOps soon. So I would say stay tuned for future releases to make that easier to set up. But basically I would say the general frameworks send, tend to follow a similar pattern in which scans are done um, so you can imagine scanning for vulnerabilities um, in, your, in your artifacts. So static code analysis um, of, of code that you've written uh, for vulnerabilities as well and, and in the packages and then a testing. So basically being able to cryptographically sign and create a hash of the events that you need to secure in your pipeline and then checking for them. So you would basically write policy to say, don't let somebody deploy um, an artifact unless it's gone through a scan. So that's a basic concept of DevSecOps, and we want to make that easier for customers to set up um, with this service. Um, hey, there's still, uh, someone's asking Deepak, what is concurrent deployment with limits? What is concurrent deployment? Um, well, Ophelia showed you the parallel stages. So there's parallelism within one pipeline. You can also, um, again, with a large team, and maybe you have CI and CD continuous deployment so that each build to your main branch triggers a deployment, a la Netflix or other um, enterprises who have that kind of like mm, mature DevOps capabilities. There, there's a lock on an environment. So each environment, while it's being deployed to in a stage, so a stage is a single deploy, is a deployment to one environment, that locks that environment. So you may have other deployments going on at the same time, but they can't be deploying to the same one because that would lead to kind of the unknown state. So that's basically the parallel, parallelism in deployments. And we have, uh, do we support Bitbucket information from Srikant? Oh yeah, Shrikanth, that is a great question. That, that is coming, that's coming soon. Um, and we look forward to kind of posting about that. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can in a build pipeline now, just because build instructions are a shell and you could write your own Git clone um, and pass through the auth to Bitbucket with secrets, with the vault secrets, um, but a more integrated solution to trigger and to use it in the stages coming. Okay. And what are the supported artifacts from SET? Supported artifacts. Um, we could go back. I mean, let's like we could go back and share the sort of DevOps project artifact. Um, if we want to go back over to the console, Ophelia, but oh. or, or yeah, or just even that that um, that diagram. But right now, basically, so you may be wondering about other package types. So we do have the artifact registry, yeah, here. What, uh, you want to go to the demo? Yeah, yes. let's go on this one, right? So there is the, the artifact repository and the container registry. So those are the two types right now that are OCI native services. The container registry, obviously, you're able to push containers. The artifact registry, you can push any file, and then it is versioned and immutable. So you could push a tarball, a jar file, a war file, uh, again, if you're using Java, um, 
if you're, I think we got a question about like, what about Maven repos? So if you're using Maven, you would push to either a public Maven repository, um, or again, if it's a package that you're using in your own code, you would sort of host your own private Maven uh, repository. We have two more questions from the live. All right, let's do two more questions. We are not using pipeline projects in Jenkins. What is OCI DevOps needed? Oh, uh, yeah, if you're not using Jenkins, then that's, that's fine if you're starting a new project or you're using something else. Um, so we had a customer who wrote their own GitLab integration. Um, so they were using GitLab and wanted a sort of a tighter integration to run a deployment when their GitLab CI completed. They wrote that using the Python SDK and the um, DevOps APIs. Um, but if you're just starting, so if you're not using Jenkins, you're saying, hey, we have this new project, you can start with OCI DevOps. Um, and you can just start to create your project here and then make your build pipeline and deployment pipeline. Well, I lied. Someone posted another question. So there's still two more questions. Yeah. Can oh, you see. use the CD, CI CD process for Apex apps? Right, PL SQL. I, that is that is a really common request. I would say right now in build. So if you think about that build and instruction file that's YAML, you have a shell. You would install, say, like SQL CL uh, from sort of the database tools team or or another tool to go run your uh, schema migration or PL SQLs file. You can do that. You'd get the auth back and then run it which is basically then like a hosted um, runner that's just running your commands. In deployment, you could do that with an instance group deployment. Again, because typically your database is not gonna have you know, an endpoint that's public on the internet, you would um, basically use a VM deployment to a jump host. So you'd have a small host in your tenancy, in your subnet, do a deployment to that host, and then run your PL SQL through those instructions. Uh, I see here a Shrikanth question around, oh, let's see, it just disappeared. Um, can you copy build jobs and edit the job instead of creating from scratch? Um, yeah, you would, exactly. You would just, and, and I have this in my demo project when I make sort of like slight variations, you can just copy your build instructions and then in your build stage, you, def you just point your build stage at that different build instruction file. So if I have like, you know, build spec, I could have, you know, build spec beta and run that one. Um, well, these were great questions. Uh, oh, we've gotten a lot of this question um, here. Karthavan is asking whether DevOps can be used with integration cloud. Um, so because you can use the shell to call APIs, you would be able to call the integration cloud API, but we'd love to hear more about your use case on how you're using integration cloud and what would be useful to kind of promote from, I imagine, like say a dev um, integration, uh, you know, let's say you're making a mapping between two different systems and you want to test that uh, before you promote it to production. Um, we'd love to talk to you about that use case because um, it does sound like that's something that the customers really want. Um, we're looking forward to, you know, adding to the things that are easy to do with OCI DevOps. Um, you know, generally, if you have a use case that's not covered by one of the built-in stages, you're able to do that because you have access to a shell uh, through either the build spec or deploying to an instance group. And then there, you install the tools, set up your configuration, get your artifacts, get your secret. Then you have everything basically in that runner and you run it. Um, but of course, the most common things like running PL SQL, we're looking to make easier for our customers in the future. Okay. I was gonna make a joke about continuously delivering my son to school, but I didn't even get to make that joke. So- We lost Ophelia my... as well because of the snowstorm, so. Oh no, it's yes, really- That's why it so, vanished. <laughs> that's right, we have some resiliency here built in uh, to the webinar. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that is important in life and in DevOps. Um, Looks like we got one more question pop up. Yeah, just how do people read this? Kenna, that's a good question. Um, I, I think we have, yeah, we have an email address that's public. So do you have that one from the LA handy? Maybe we yeah. can add that and give that I'm out. Gonna find, yeah, I'm gonna find it and do that. Cool, okay. okay. And yeah, we can well, add that as well to the, the replay post. Um, I mentioned in chat, but we're going to share all of the, the resources and the links that we've talked about are all going to be there. Yeah, um, there are so. a lot of links 
to get started. Um, so the reference architecture, I would um, highlight to people again, if you have an Oracle Cloud account, you can just click a button and run this reference architecture. I think I'll bring it up so I can show it. And if you don't, um, then you can sign up um, for a for an Oracle um, free account. Well, it's a great ways to to dive in if you haven't already. Yeah, and then so here it is. So basically, this will set up the demo that's really similar to what Ophelia showed you today. And you can just click this button to deploy to Oracle Cloud. And that will um, basically run it in the resource manager service, which is the way that you automate infrastructure with, with OCI. OK. Well, awesome. thanks, everybody, for um, coming. And thank you, Ophelia. Uh, and stay safe in the snowstorm. <laughs> I've popped up one final poll for those of us who are with us. If you'd like to give us a little feedback, we love to hear that. Uh, and thank you so much, Ophelia, even though I know she can't hear me, uh, and Jonathan and Sarab for jumping in as well, answering all those great questions. Thank you to all of you for joining us and for asking all those great questions. Um, you will get all of these resources um, sent out in that replay post, so we encourage you to go and check out uh, our complete CICD platform, uh, dig deeper into DevOps, um, and reach out if you have any questions. Um, come back for future events of all kinds. So thanks so much, folks, and have a great day.